Hello, my friends, and welcome back again with the essential history in oncology. The oncology module, my friends, comes to you in the exam. Sometimes with cases of suspected cancer or sometimes with cases of confirmed cancer and they are waiting for treatment option. So whenever you understand from the task before starting that you are facing a case of oncology, what you need to cover in the history taking if it is required. Of course, you have to cover the essential history related to the oncology. Like what? First of all, after, of course, finishing the introduction, greeting, you know, set the agenda of the station, you need to understand the current complaint and you make a proper history for the present illness. For example, if a patient had a bleeding, right? And she's a postmenopausal patient, for example, okay? So you need to ensure that this patient ha does have, or she doesn't have, any of the red flag signs of cancer. What are the red flag signs of cancer? Red flag signs of cancer, as we know it is loss of appetite, problem with digestion or indigestion, bloating of the tummy, unexpected weight loss, problems with the water works, okay? Especially if she have noticed any change or seeing blood or a change of the color of the urine, or sometimes patient, if she had a mass, okay, she might feel uh, the urgency symptoms or incontinence recently, okay, loss of control. Recent problem with the bowel movement, abnormal bleeding, okay, abnormal offensive discharge, feeling of a lump, or a mass in the tummy or from down below. So I need to cover those, right? And the red flag signs of cancer, specifically, okay, the general signs, okay, of uh, the loss of appetite, unexpected or unintended weight loss, uh, feeling of bloating of the tummy, indigestion. Okay, guys? Problems of the water work or the bowel is associated mainly with advanced type of cancer, okay? Feeling of offensive uh, discharge or a present notice of offensive discharge associated mainly with the uterine and cervical cancers. Lump, a feeling of lump or mass in the down below also will be associated, okay? Feeling of the cross, I mean. So... Those are questions that needed in oncology cases. Yes, please. Those are the questions needed in the oncology task, the history. Very important to, to ensure the history of a So patient was antenatal, right? She complained of epilepsy or renal disease in pregnancy. How about smear history in this case? Is it important? In this case, it's important. Yes, important. In the antenatal, it's not important, the but antenatal is not important. But in oncology, it's a must, right? So if you forgot this here, you miss a very important part of both history taking and in the safety as well. So especially bleeding, especially bleeding cases, especially any case of oncology. So smear test is a must. Okay, even if the patient, for example, is 66, right? Do I need to ask her whether she was up following the smear? What was the last smear result? Yes, I need to ask. Because maybe this patient is 65 or 66, but she never attended the cervical screening program. Right? So please ensure this one, even if the patient is too old. If the patient is pre-menopausal, of course, it's a must that you cover the cycle regularity. And when I ask about the cycle, not only the loss of menstrual cycle, but I ask about the change in the pattern of cycle. 
right? And ask about any bleeding in between. That's mean intermenstrual bleeding, right? Bleeding after intercourse, again, because it can be a sign of a cancer, right? So I ask about not only the cycle, let me say, ask about blood, okay? Abnormal bleeding. Then go to the obstetric history. Obstetric history, if the patient is mainly premenopausal, right? So you have 54, 51, 48, okay? Ask here about the previous obstetric history, okay? If the patient is young and she's coming to you with type of a cancer or abnormal smears or early stage cancer, for example, early stage cancer, uh, cervix or early stage cancer ovary, for example, you need to ensure her fertility wishes, right? So in early stage cancer or in pre-malignant lesions, if the, your patient is young, confirm the fertility wishes because you know that would be a different management plan for patients who want to retain their fertility, right? Like for example, a patient comes to you with endometrial hyperplasia with atypia. It's a must that you confirm the fertility wishes. If you didn't confirm that, that will be a very important point that you've missed, right? Family history of cancer is important, of course, because the familial syndromes like Lynch syndrome, like the BRCA, for example, okay? So we have to ensure if the patient had a related type of cancer, okay? So family history of cancer, especially, for example, if we speak about uh, ovary, breast, or uterus, so we need to ensure that. Other medical problems, any medications, any regular medication, any allergy, past surgery, social, very important. If you have a patient with CIN3, for example, and she's heavy smoker, and you missed this part, you know that that's mean it will reflect on the management and you will miss the part of smoking cessation and you will affect the patient's safety. So can you see one point in the history makes you lose at least three marks in the management of the case, right? So here, my friends, you become maybe confused. Why Dr. Rabash, he said that I don't need to ask every point in the history or in the template. And now she is scaring us to death when she say that if I missed one point in my history, I might miss the station. Yes, guys, it's all about the prioritization. It's all about what's important when to ask, okay? So I am in the oncology module. Some light comes there in my mind and I must have clear, clear, points in the history to be covered. I must cover current complaint, red flag signs of cancer, smear history, any bleeding history cycles as well. Obstetric history if the patient is premenopausal, fertility wishes in young patient, family history of cancer for the familial syndrome, other medical problems, any drugs or medications, any other medications, any allergy, okay, all are related to the safety. Surgical history could be important. Social, including smoking, alcohol, recreational drugs, important. Family support is also important, especially, especially in older patient or in patient with advanced stage of cancer. Why? Because if the patient is elderly or the patient have advanced, advanced stage of cancer and she doesn't have a family support at home, then you must contact the social service for her so they can arrange a carer for this patient if she is going through a long journey, right? So understanding the patient social background is important in the oncology, again, especially, right, if it is advanced cancer or the patient is old, because this will necessitate part of your management, 
that you contact the social service because she will need a carer. She will need somebody to take care of her. Right? Is it clear so far, my friends? Yes, Dr. Excuse me, my friends. I think I just caught a cold today. And the early signs are there. <laughs> okay. Okay, so guys, remember the red flag signs for the ovarian cancer are a must. And this is to be covered in the cases where you have cyst. Okay, so the persistent abdominal distension, right? And this is will be referred as bloating for the patient. So ask the patient if she had any bloating. Feeling full early or loss of appetite, pelvic or abdominal pain, increase the um, rushing to the toilet or the what we call the urge, okay, to the toilet, right? Okay. So, who will be ready, my friends, to take a history of a simple case of oncology? Any volunteer? Ma'am. Ma Hi. Me. Okay. Hi, ma'am. How are you? Hi, fine. I'm, I'm okay. 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 So, I want a straightforward case for you? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. So you are meeting Mrs. Um, Miss Sama Omeri. Okay. okay. Shall I start your four minutes? Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Go start? Please. Okay. Yes. Hi, I'm Dr. Dabinda, one of the doctor in the clinic today. May I confirm your name and age? Hello. Hello, doctor. Uh, this is Sama Mary, and I'm 25. How may I address you? Sama is fine. Uh, okay, Sama, I have gathered from you notes that uh, you have undergone uh, some test uh, for, of the neck of your womb and you are here to discuss the results. Is that correct? Yes, doctor, it's correct. Um, I have the smearing test. Um, they invite me mm -hmm. to do it uh, for my mm -hmm. GP. Um, and then um, I have received a phone call to, to say that I have to meet the doctor to discuss the mm -hmm. test results, so um, mm -hmm. I'm I wonder if there is anything wrong with it. Okay, uh, yes, Sama, I can understand your worries. Any other concerns or expectation from today's consultation? No, doctor. I just would like to know more about my result. That's it. Okay, Sama. Sama, thank you. Sama, I want to ask uh, a few questions and then I will tell you your investigation results and we will make a management plan for you. How does it sound? Yeah, sure. Fine. Thank you. Uh, Sama, uh, can you tell me in your own words that uh, do you have any complaint? No, not at all. Okay, any vaginal discharge? Mm, not really, no. Okay, and uh, Sama, um, when was your last menstrual period? It was ten days ago. Okay, uh, are you uh, are your periods are regular? Yeah. Okay, uh, Sama, do you practice any contraception? Um, no, I'm not actively, you know, in a relationship now. Okay, Sama. Sama, um, uh, are you up to date? Uh, were you up to date on your cervical smears? Yes, doctor. This is my first one, I told you. 
okay sama have you ever screen for sexually shared infection you or you no okay uh, uh sama some private question yes hello are you sexually active not at the moment i am not sexually active at the moment i'm not in a relationship okay, okay sama okay thank you sama are you uh, are you following your gp for any health issue like is uh, an increased blood pressure or sugars no any surgery in the tummy or down low no okay any family history of concerns like what doctor like any cancer uh, bowel cancer bladder cancer or uh, ovarian cancer no 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 good for better no okay no. sama do you smoke um i used to smoke yes um 10 cigarettes per day uh so uh, so have you reduced the smoking yeah i'm, I'm trying i know it's not good for my health i appreciate it sama and uh, smoking is not good for health and if you want i will i can connect you to the nhs stop the smoking services how does it sound sama it's okay uh, sama what about alcohol no i'm not drinking any recreational drugs no are you well supported at home um actually i live myself by my own i'm i'm working as a teacher okay sama okay sama and um, have you ever been down, down depressed or uh, upset sometimes but not not really thank okay. you it's your time management thank you okay are you allergic to any medication thank you very much dr tabinda this is your time management finished four minutes finished thank you ma'am you are welcome media Yeah, I know that you'd like to continue your history taking. You wanted to ask about allergy, okay? So, anything else you'd like to ask? Ma'am, only uh, after that BMI. Okay. Yes. Anything? Anything that would come to your mind in oncology station? Ma'am, uh, I was thinking that it's a pre-malignant change, so I, I that's why I didn't ask about the. weight loss and uh, any these type of question okay so do you know that this is a malignant pre malignant or not i sure yes ma'am 100% <laughs> just <Yeah. a> clinic <laughs> right biopsy result is not there okay so i would like you you know to ask more questions about um you know the red flag signs of the cancers at least okay feeling of heaviness or lump or um asking her while you are asking about the bleeding okay uh, that if she had bleeding in between the two cycles okay and she's not active sexually active at the moment but she used to be right so you might ask her at that time if she had experienced any bleeding after intercourse or not right so you need just yes, you know to show the examiner that you are excluding the red flag signs of a cancer mm -hmm. or related mm -hmm. symptoms of a cancer right avoid repeating question that the patient told you before in her story because that's mean for them that you didn't listen so just please avoid repeating asking about the information that you've been told already so when she told you at the beginning that um i have received invitation for the cervical smear she's already 25 right and that's mean she doesn't have previous smear history yes. right so please don't ask mm -hmm. her right when she told you that she's not sexually active at the moment in the uh, contraception part okay so don't repeat the same one right mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. so this is the thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh yeah dr sara cervical cancer okay is specifically the most important risk factor is the hpv infection okay but there is a relation in some types of cancer to the family history 
okay or it increased tendency in some um, in some families yes it's not the highest risk highest risk is hpv by far yes so it was a good question also that she asked it about the sexually shared infection for asking sexually shared infection or any intimate uh, questions we need to sign post so don't sign post before smoking smoking is just a habit okay but sign post before asking about multiple sexual partner before asking about sexually shared infection before asking about problem during intercourse okay right okay yes for the younger age, like a patient who is 25, you can even ask her about the history of vaccination. However, I'll tell you, Dr. Suzanne, if the patient had uh, been vaccinated already to the HPV, would it make a difference in the outcome? It wouldn't make a difference in the outcome. However, it's a question that the role player sometimes asks you. So sometimes the role player, they ask you, uh, oh, how did I got this virus? When you come to discussion about the HPV. And she will tell you, oh my God, um, no, I don't know. How did I get this, this, uh, this virus? I even had received the vaccination. It must be a wrong re test result. This is not my result, something like that. So you in this case, you have to explain to her that the vaccine was effective, you know, to prevent the um, this high risk HBV in seventy percent. That means seven out of seventy out of hundred. Okay, so yes, it reduced the risk, but it does not eliminate it hundred percent. Okay, Doctor Tabenda, so you ask it the questions. Yeah, yes, your frame of the history taking it was okay. However, please avoid repeating questions. Please, okay, show the examiner again that you are excluding red flag signs of cancer. So ask about related symptoms. You have already uh, otherwise covered the um, rest of the history, so it was okay. I think you need to a little bit practice on that so you can refine your um, presentation. And I'll tell you um, my own uh, secret, you know. It's no longer a secret now, but... I used to write down my stations when I was preparing for part three, you know? So yes, and I still have the my hand uh, notes, my own hand notes. So you can write down your station before you present it. You can write down your station while you're studying, even before practicing with your study partner. Why writing down a station is a good idea, okay? Because when you write down, you think, you tend to think before writing. Right. And when you read what you wrote already afterwards, OK, you will read it fast and then you can revise it. You can, you know, also correct yourself. So I used to have uh, a pencil, not a pen, OK, to write my cases. So, you know, you erase and modify. OK, and you got your best version okay, of the presentation and the history taking and even counseling. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Tavinda. Thank you very much, my love. Okay, and wish you all the best. Now we are going to go to see another type of history that I prepared to you guys today. And remember, oncology means red flag signs, please. Okay, exclude red flag signs of cancer and related symptoms. We are a gynecologist, so bleeding, okay? Bleeding discharge is our job, okay? So exclude any bleeding problem in the gynecology problem in the cancer problem as well, okay? Okay, so let's see the fertility history. How many sessions per day? As if you can do 14 stations per day, that would be great, right? So anything that you can do, do it. Give it your best shot, okay? Try your best, really. So if you can really practice day and night, do it, okay? There is no minimum, there is no maximum, but I'll tell you something. If somebody, okay, 
is not driving well. He can't drive well, okay? His technique in, in driving and control over the car is not good, okay? Would it help, okay, if you ask this person to drive 300 kilometer per day? Or you will advise this person, okay, maybe to attend or to take some, um, you know, few hours with supervised, um, with supervision, okay, with a supervisor, somebody to teach him techniques or to refine his techniques, find his mistakes and guide him to the correct way. This is what I say, okay? So you can practice 40 stations per day if this is possible, if this is possible, but it's a wrong practice, so no use. But if you practice four quality stations per day, that would be good. But provided that it's a full, full, okay, quality. You are revising very well. You are ensuring that you've done the station correctly. You avoid any jargon. You repeat the station. You do it in the 10 minutes. You fulfill all the big points, okay? So if you have a perfect four stations per day, that could be good. Otherwise, yes, please, more, more, more are needed. Okay, so fertility, history taking, dear friends. You have a patient with fertility problems. How to take history from a patient with a fertility problem? First of all, okay, we need to ensure this patient factors, right, of the subfertility. What are the problems in the female fertility? Could be ovarian, could be uterine, could be tubal, could be something from the outract or external genitalia, right? So, Ovarian, how can you test the ovarian, you tackle the ovarian function by history? Simply, you need to ensure this patient is having regular cycles or not. Yes, well done, Dr. Pusha. So, regular cycles, you need to ask, right? How many days? Right? Okay. Is it associated with pain? Is it regular pain or severe pain? Why? Because endometriosis is there, is one of the causes of infertility. Right? Okay. So, uterine factors. Sometimes cervical also can cause bleeding. So, how would you exclude that? Yes, time of the menarche and the regular, right, regularity of of that period. Also, you need to know if this patient has any abnormal bleeding, like bleeding after intercourse or in between her cycles, right? You need to ensure that this patient have updated with her cervical smear because we don't treat patient for fertility without checking her smear, right? So it's part of the history taking the smear. And I will put it under the uterine factor, okay? Okay, tubal factor. How tubal factor can be excluded? Simply ask her about surgical history. Simply signpost and ask her about sexually shared infection. Why? Because if the patient had previous history of sexual shared infection, this put her at high risk of tubal disease. Previous tubal surgery, same thing, right? Or multiple pelvic surgery can affect the hair tubes, right? Okay, some outflow tract disorder, like if the patient had septum, if the patient had dyspareunia, if the patient had vaginismus, okay, right? So I'm just exploring the fertility problems by history, 
How? Please, let's see. Yeah, of course. I need to take a full or a appropriate female history taking. So asking here about cycle, regularity of cycle, how many days, right? First day of the last cycle, and is that the cycle is associated with pain and is it severe pain or not? Any bleeding in between the two cycles, right? And how about the smear? The smears are updated or not? And please take care if the patient is only 25 or above, not below that. If the patient had any abnormal discharge, is the patient had pain in the lower tummy or signpost and ask about history of sexually shared infection, any problems with the waterworks, any feeling of masses or lump from down below. If the patient had any previous history of pregnancy, of course, this can help you. And if she's on regular medications and if she had surgery, especially in the lower tummy or from down below. Family history as well, drug allergy. Her BMI is important in fertility. And maybe also ask about the patient occupation. Social is important, social factors or habits, smoking, alcohol, exercise, and drugs. And here we have increased exercise specifically for patients who had intense exercise or patient with very low BMI. One of the very important causes of subfertility is the male fertility, subfertility problems. Huh? So for the male factors, I will ask the female about her partner, okay? How the partner helps, right? Is he generally fit and well, right? What is your partner doing for living? for how long you have been together, for how long you have been trying. Signpost and ask about the frequency of the intercourse and if there is any difficulty during the sexual life. That's why it's very important to signpost, otherwise it will be rude from you to ask people about their sexual life. You can ask about if the partner have done the semen analysis, yes or not, and if the partner have fathered children before, yes or not. Okay, so this is for the female fertility template. Okay, so those are the things that we need to cover. If the female comes to you with high FSH, like premature ovarian failure, then in this case, you will increase some questions related to the premature ovarian failure, like the mood uh, swings or the hot flush or difficulty sleeping. Those are the signs or symptoms of premature ovarian failure, right? So just, you know, adjust your history taking according to the condition. And again, this is just a general theme that you can modify according to the need and according to the case. Is it clear so far, my friends, for the female history taking? I hope it is. Any questions for the female? Okay, I know that it might be late in some countries. Okay, but we will go fast, fast to the, to the male history taking. For the male history taking, my friends, the history uh, points to be covered, start by looking to the age. It will be written, of course, in the task, but just to confirm it, okay? Occupation, what is the male is working? That's very important and related to the fertility, especially some jobs like, for example, gym trainer, okay? How many years the partners have been together and if the male have have tried, um, sorry, have fathered the child before, okay? When you ask about for how long they have been together, please don't forget to ask about the frequency of the intercourse timing and any difficulty during sexual life. That's very important to signpost when you speak to a male about the, his sexual life, of course, okay? And very important to signpost if you want to ask about problems like, uh, premature ejaculation or, uh, you know, problems in erection, of course, right? So 
if the male have done any semen analysis before, you need to ask and know about the result. You need to know if he had any surgery before, if he had any specific trauma, especially uh, to the lower uh, part, okay, or lower pelvis. Any history of chronic illness, that would be important. Some uh, chronic illness, of course, affect the quality of semen analysis. Any history of infection, right, especially STI, of course. Medical history, if he is on any regular medications, allergy, weight to height ratio, family history as well, and social, like smoking, drinking, exercise, and recreational drugs. You need to know also if she had tried any treatment before, of course. If permission given by partner for semen can tell her or not. You tell the lady, you mean? If you have a, a, a male fertility problems, you will have a male role player, my dear. Don't worry about this, okay? Otherwise, if the semen analysis is normal, okay? It will be written there, focus on the female test result, okay? And just ask her if she is aware of the semen analysis of the partner, yes or not, the semen analysis result, okay? And that's it, okay? If she had a permission by the partner or she said, or there, it's written there, okay? Don't worry, they don't trick you in the exam, okay? So something will be there. Like, for example, she would tell you, yes, I know that my husband's semen analysis is normal. Okay? So don't worry about this part. Clear, my friends? It could be so many questions to ask. Sometimes you feel shy when you have a male patient, right? But you have to cover. You have to cover the occupation. Very important, very important. Right? And you need to cover the problems with the sexual intercourse. You need to cover the medical problems. You need to cover um, any medication that he takes, specifically if he's taking um, even, you know, um, some amino acids or taking some supplement. Okay. And you need to know about the exercise level. You need to know about smoking and drinking because those are modifiable risk factor, especially if the semen analysis is not good. Okay. Recreational drugs also is a must to be asked for male subfertility. And don't hesitate really to ask about the sexual problems. Okay. So problems during the sexual intercourse. This is a very important. You confirm confidentiality for what, my dear? Confidentiality should be, it's not should, it must be respected in all the patients and it must be kept. This is what any patient expects from their doctors. Okay, so we don't specifically here speak about vulnerable group. You just meet a male and you ask the male about any problem, just sign post. Okay, so um, I'm so sorry that I ask some personal questions. I don't mean to be intrusive but it's necessary, okay, for um, the clinical management of your case. That's it. Okay, so guys, anybody would like to take history? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, so you are meeting Mr. Gregory Adams, okay? Okay, so who is going to present, guys? Yes, I will do, doctor. Okay, so Dr. Sarah, how are you? Alhamdulillah, how are you, doctor? Alhamdulillah. Okay, so let me start your four minutes now. 
Okay. Uh, hello, am I talking to uh, Mr. George Adam? Yes. I'm Dr. Sara, the doctor in the clinic. Uh, how do you like me to call you? Mr. Adam. Okay, okay. so Mr. Adam, um, I come to know that um, uh, you have uh, um, you are trying you have been trying for for for, be, for a baby, and you have done some investigation, and you are here to have the results. Am I right? <clears throat> Yes, Dr. Kamal. Okay, any other expectation, please? Um, nothing, I just want to know how the test result because I'm so worried about it. Okay, I can see how much you are concerned. I'm going to answer that in a moment. I just need to ask you a couple of questions if you don't mind. Then I will tell you about the results. By the end, I may we may do um, further investigation, do some referral. I will give you some written information to go through. Is it fine? Yes, sure. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Mr. Adam, can you tell me please for how long you have been trying for a baby? It's two years now. Okay, any um, um, uh, other investigation was done or treatment have been received? Yeah, I um, I have seen my GP uh, two weeks ago and he have done the same semen analysis for me and he told me that there was no sperm uh, okay. in that semen, it showed nothing. Uh, this was uh, come to me, you know, like a shock. So he requested to repeat this one, and uh, he asked also for some blood tests, and I have done them. Okay, I'm sorry, sorry, I can see how much you are concerned. So um, uh, have you ever had a baby? No. Uh, what about your partner? No. Yeah, okay. Like, you Me. know, she's desperate for a baby, and I, I would like to make her happy. Okay. Um uh so um um can I, can I ask uh, some personal question? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. Um how frequent you are having sex? Every 2 to 3 days. Okay. Any problem during that? No, nothing. Okay. And um are you having bleeding? Uh, she uh, is she having any bleeding or pain? No, she didn't tell me anything like that. Okay, are you having any problem in ejaculation, erection, or libido? No. Okay. Um, 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 any history of sexual sharing infection? No, I can't remember. Uh, and um, um, any history, can you encounter any history of trauma or uh, mom's, mom's infection previously? No. Any um, recent um, um, illness or fever? No. Okay. Have uh, you encountered frequent go to the bath, uh, losing weight or gaining weight? Yeah, recently I, I have noticed, yes, I, I put a lot of weight. Okay. And um, um, have you feel um, any fatigue or um, tiredness? Yeah, I think with the weight gain, I, I feel like I'm heavy and I'm a bit, you know, I'm fit like before. Okay, I see. Um, uh, so, um, um, have you been diagnosed previously by from uh, by an illness? No, I it used to be um, with unhealthy. Okay, and um, uh, are you taking any medication, particularly any um, uh, medicine for um, bodybuilding, um, uh, med medicine for uh, hypertension, or any anything? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, this guy in the gym, he told me that we can give you some supplements. Yeah, okay. That's and good. when was the last time you took it? Okay, so it's your history taking, finished the four minutes. This is the maximum. Even four minutes is more than required, my dear. Okay. No worries, Dr. Sara. So what else do you want to ask Mr. Uh, Gregory Adams? I want to ask him more what uh, details about the um, the the, the drug he's taking. Um, yes. If he's taking any medication, what's the name, and when was the last time he took it, and if he's planning to take it again, and uh, what's going to um, because anabolic um, drugs can affect the quality and the sperm account. Then I'm going to ask about the about the quality of the life and medicine he's taking, uh, any allergies, and um, how much he trained in the gym. And um, I can he's see his there. He, he's working as a gym trainer, actually. 
uh, okay, and um, he as he felt some weakness recently, maybe because of diabetes. We don't know which one came first. Okay, so that some of his friends advised him to take uh, some supplement. Okay, so I'll tell you, Doctor Sar, you mm -hmm. seem to be very knowledgeable, actually, mashallah. And you know what you are asking about, but a little bit of, you know, shortening of the questions that you ask, use short sentence when you ask, okay? And go systematic. It's better, okay, to go systematic. Why? You will save your time simply. So by, by going systematic, you will save your time and you will be able to, you know, ask back-to-back -back questions one by one quickly, okay? And finish in less than four minutes. So for example, here in that history taking, you see the age, confirm occupation. For how many years you've been together or you have been trying for a baby? Okay, it was written there, however, okay? You can just say it like, I can see you're trying for two years for now. Would you please tell me more about the frequency of the intercourse? Okay. If you don't mind, of course, after signposting. Timing and any difficulty in the sexual life, you have asked it already, right? So ask the next question if he had any semen analysis before. For that, he told you. So that's, that question was saved now. Ask about the risk factor of azospermia, like any surgery, any trauma. Okay, from down below, especially to the uh, external genitalia. Okay, any history of chronic illness, any history of infection, like sexually shared infection or infection to the testis. Medical history, right? Are you on any regular medication, allergy, way too high ratio? Family history of concerns, okay? Social, like smoking, drinking, exercise, the level of exercise, and recreational drugs. Any treatment that you have tried before, and that's it. Okay, so the questions are short. So just cover them one by one, and you will reach to the same result. Please don't ask about symptoms in the lady, because you have asked Mr. Adam about Mrs. Adam, if she had lower abdominal pain or she had a problems, right? During the intercourse or pain. Please don't ask, right? Okay. So omit this part, please. And when you ask questions to the male, try to use short sentence, right? Okay, this will save your time, that's it. So this is what I have noticed from your performance. You are good, you are knowledgeable, okay? You know what you are asking about? So for me, I believe that you are a good doctor in your clinic and patient love to, to speak to you. But for the exam purpose of you, you need to make it short. Okay, my dear? Okay, doctor. Thank you. I appreciate your notes. You are welcome, my dear. You are welcome. Thank you very much. Okay, so guys, I'm coming to the last history sample of today. Okay. And... This is the urogynecology history. So the urogynecology history, what are the conditions of urogynecology that we have? So you know what are you searching for, right? So patient, when come to you with the urogynecology symptoms, she either had incontinence, right? She either had prolapse or dysuria, for example, or chronic pain, right? Lower abdominal pain that's relieved by the urination, like the cases of the bladder pain syndrome. Is that correct, my friends? Okay, so my aim when I ask the questions of the urogynecology that I am trying to get what is the problem of the common problem of the urogynecology, okay? And what are the specific symptoms that this patient have so I can reach 
to a diagnosed, a provisional diagnosis or even a differential diagnosis, right? So I need to know first about the urination. Of course, it will be written in the task, what type of the problem that the patient have, right? But let's say I'm starting from the scratch, from the very beginning. So I'm asking about the patient urination, how many times the patient need to go to the toilet, right? Do you feel any rush while you're going to the toilet? So when you ask about rush, you are covering urgency, right? If there is any leak while you rush, okay? So that's mean you are asking about what? Incontinence, right? Because if she leak, she had incontinence, right? The patient need to wear a, 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 a bads, Sanitary baths? Yes. So how many? This will show you, okay, how it, the condition affect her life, okay, or how severe is the problem. The patient need to wake up at night for toilet. That means you are asking for what symptom? Nocturia. Right? So let's see other symptoms. So now you are covering urge incontinence. Right? If there is any leaking while you exercise or during cough, what are you now testing by this question? Yes. Stress, urinary incontinence, right? The patient feel pain or does it hurt when you pee? Right? So you are now asking about dysuria. Do you feel complete emptying? Oh, incomplete emptying. This is for urinary retention, right? So you are now excluding the urinary retention. Aggravating factor. If there is anything in particular that increase your problem, anything that help or it relieves the symptoms, right? So for example, if you have patient with bladder pain syndromes, he will tell you that going to the toilet or peeing is associated with feeling uh, relief or it get worse with some certain types of food, correct? Any pain in the lower body, in the lower tummy, of course, this is associated with infections. Bowel symptoms like feeling of constipation or difficulty, this is with the prolapse cases. Do you feel any lump or heaviness from down below? This is for the prolapse, yeah, right? Please don't forget to ask about the amount of drink per day. I used to, you know, in my practice, when I was preparing for the part three, I used to forget about this question, you know. <laughs> then I learned that this is one of the very important questions that I never forget. So amount of drink per day is important. Why? Because sometimes the simple answer okay, that you limit the water intake in this patient, or it's the primary measures. Like a patient comes to you with um, feeling of urgency, right? Sometimes incontinence. And she complains so much that this is affect the quality of her life. And when you ask her about the amount that she drink per day, she tell you that she taking six cups of coffee, right? And fizzy drinks. Once she cut this off, I think that she will have like 90% relief of her symptoms. So very important. And usually in the exam, the trick is that they will bring you a patient that drink coffee or tea too much. Okay. Ask also about what? About if the patient pee or she had problems uh, when she is having sex. And this is related to the SUR. So my friends, this is about the urogynecology history taking, okay? To remember the specific history taking of the urogynecology, this is not all. So you introduce yourself in the common way, you um, plan the station with the, with the rule player in the common way, take the permission from the rule player that you start on the history and ask a question that is related to the problem that this patient have. 
right? So if this patient have problem, for example, of incontinence, then focus on incontinent symptoms, but don't forget to exclude dysuria and the chronic pelvic pain, right? Because sometimes there will be overlapping symptoms. Don't forget to exclude the presence of prolapse. Maybe she had a stress urinary incontinence and she had prolapse, right? So you need here to speak about the prolapse and the treatment of the prolapse, right? Don't forget to ask other questions in the urogynecology. This is not all. So do you think that BMI is important in the urogynecology? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, sure. Because if the patient had prolapse or she had a stress urinary incontinence, ABC of the management of this patient will be asking her to reduce weight, right? So asking the patient the questions, you know, of the urogynecology doesn't mean that this is the only thing that I will ask, okay? But it means that I need to ensure the natural of the complaint of the patient. So my patient, she had a specific complaint. She had a problem. In order to get uh, a problem, this insight or analysis of this problem, okay? Ask her through the history one-to-one -one question, okay? And you will get finally to what should be the correct management of this case. So my last volunteer today is going to take history, okay, from Mrs. Melinda Smas, 30 years. Anybody would like to spend four minutes with Ms. Melinda? Yes, ma'am, uh, can I try? Yes, sure. Thank you. Please read the task, and when you're ready, I will start your time. Yes, sure. Yes, ma'am, I'm ready. Okay, my dear, so starting. Hi, I'm Dr. Shaisa, one of the doctor in Gynae Clinic today. Uh, may I confirm your name and age, please? Hi, uh, this is Ms. Melinda Smith, and I'm 30 years. How may I address you? Melinda's fine. Uh, Melinda, I have gathered from your case notes that... Uh, you have problem with your water work uh, and you want to discuss the options for the treatment. Uh, am I right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. sure. I will address all your concerns in a while. Uh, but before that, is it okay if I ask a couple of questions to know more about you? So finally, yeah. we can lead to self-acceptable and mutually agreed management plan. Would it be okay? Yeah, sure, doctor. So, Melinda, uh, can you tell me more about your concern? Yes, doctor. Um, I do have a rush to the toilet. So whenever I go out to any place, the first thing that I do that I search about where is the toilet? Because all of a sudden I feel that I need to run, okay? Sometimes I can't hold myself and I leak. I'm so sorry to hear about that. Um, we are here to help you out and support you. So for, for how long you are having this problem? Yeah, this is over the last year, but it's very much worse in the last three months. Mm -hmm. So how many times do you pee uh, in the day and night? Maybe 15 times. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me uh, about your water intake, uh, Melinda, and caffeine intake? Yeah, um, I take like three cups of um green tea mm -hmm. because I, I follow a healthy diet and um, maybe also drink like three liter of water per day just to keep myself hydrated. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, apart from that, uh, uh, do you leak on coughing, sneezing or climbing up the stairs? No. Mm -hmm. Any difficulty in passing urine like uh, incomplete widening or dribbling afterwards? 
no 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 but every time i i go to the toilet i just you know pass a small amount a small amount that's it mm -hmm. any pain associated with that no Burning? no and did you notice any blood uh, while passing urine no mm -hmm. all right uh, and uh, uh, apart from that how are your periods otherwise sorry how are your periods otherwise yeah periods yes um yeah it's uh, it's fine it's regular it comes every month to stay for four days mm -hmm. uh, when was your last menstrual period um this was one week ago mm -hmm. all right uh, do you have any tummy pain or discharge down below no i don't feel a, a pain or a discharge mm -hmm. are you sexually active um yeah um pardon me to ask uh, these personal questions uh, uh, medinda uh, do you feel pain while while sex or bleeding afterwards no i'm not, i'm not feeling pain but sometimes i feel like it there's heaviness mm -hmm. do you have any bulge down below yeah sometimes I any wanna... mess in your tummy um you mean lump but no uh, I, I i'm not sure but but i feel sometimes it's heavy especially after intercourse and um when i try to you know clean myself sometimes i find it that's it eight to four minutes uh sorry ma'am four minutes. four minutes yes sorry okay that's time flies <laughs> Okay, so what do you think? How did you cover the uh, history taking of Miss Melinda? You started very well, by the way. So, mm, yeah, I, mean, uh, mm, I think uh, the time management uh, is the um, main uh, problem for me. Uh, that's why I didn't complete in four minutes. So I have a lot of questions still remaining. Okay, so what other questions you want to ask mainly for her? So you, you, you did cover about the symptoms of the overactive bladder. You did cover about the water intake. And you asked about the dysuria, asked about the feeling of lump or mass, asked about the discharge, asked even about the cycle, asked her about leaking with exercise. So you have excluded the ACUI. Anything else? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, so uh, I would like to um, tell her if, um, she's fond of any um, citrus things or uh, spicy foods because they are also uh, some of sometime reason for frequent uh, frequency and uh, uh, apart from that her uh, uh, her obstetrical history and uh, cervical smear uh, allergies uh, her uh, personal habits like smoking alcohol recreational drugs she's not uh, smoker and yeah Okay. Yeah, BMI. This is already mentioned. This is norm. This is normal. Her work uh, occupation are uh, already mentioned. Apart from that, uh, um, and her mental status, support at home, and uh, psychological problems, I have to ruled out. Okay. And so any from phase. yeah. So if if you want to choose two questions from what you said that you missed, only two questions for the purpose of time, and you think it will make a difference in that station? What two questions you will ask? Which I have missed, ma'am, or I have asked. Ma'am, two questions which I have missed. Two questions only choose, choose. Only ah, two okay. questions you so ask. Uh, uh, two questions. think it will so, make a difference in the marking. Hmm. So I have to inquire about the severity of symptoms in which I have to rule out uh, the symptoms of uh, overactive bladder, stress incontinence, and widening difficulty. And second question is uh, her water intake and any pain or... Uh, you, have, you have covered, I'll tell you, okay, I'll tell you that you have covered the water intake, right? You have also, um, you know, um, asked her about how many times that she go to the toilet and she told you that this is 15 times. Regarding the effect of quality of life, Okay, it seems like yes, affect the quality of her life, and this is obvious from her history. It will be better, okay, that you just highlighted that. Oh, I'm sorry that you've 
been through that, I can see that this is really affect the quality of your life. This is just, you know, to highlight it to the examiner. Okay? Yes. Okay. Um, obstetric history, allergy, any treatment received? If she filled the blood or diary? Okay. So I agree for allergy. Allergy is very important. Okay. Would you please choose another question to ask? Uh, name uh, smoking and uh, he's uh, non smoker, so this is not the coach. Okay, ma'am. So, any treatment taken so far? This is already mentioned. She had bladder diary, and what was uh, about her investigations like uh, urine dipstick and uh, bladder diary as well? Pause. Yes, ma'am. Bladder diary. She had a bladder training. Yes, she had a ma bladder. Training. Okay, so I would ask her, yes, as you said, the allergy. Okay, and I would like to know about the hair alcohol into, intake because alcohol also is working as diuretic, right? Yes. In hair management, right? The Any treatment that has been tried, that's very important, okay? Because you asked her about um, the pain while she pee and if she feel complete emptying, okay, of her uh, water bag or not, or complete relief, um, then I can include the uh, ruling out infection in the management plan. No problem with that. Okay? So yes, the things that you think it's not covered in the history taking, I can include it in the management plan. I don't want you to, to stuck forever in the history taking. I want you to move on in the station, right? Because in a minute, you have to explain to her what is the overactive bladder symptoms. Right, and you have to explain to her the uh, first line of management, including, okay, that you test her urine for infection and uh, that you ask her to fill a bladder diary, okay, for better understanding of her habits. From what she told you already, that uh, she she need to work on the water intake and minimize, you know, the the tea, the green tea intake that she had. You can also include the advice of the uh, other drinks or spicy food. Okay, with the management, you got the point. So some points you can turn it instead of asking forever history taking, you can turn it into part of your management. Right. Okay, because the discussion is not going to stop here. You can still, you know, speak to her and um, have you know force them back in the question. Yes, right. So don't worry. You you are doing really well. Okay. But don't extend so much in your history taking. Okay. Yes. You have asked what is required, almost what is required for the management of this case and the differential diagnosis. But remember, always allergy is a must to ask. Believe me. Okay. So the always, always allergy is there in the safety with asterisk on it. Okay. So everybody ask allergy, please, in every station. Okay, this is one thing, unless it's, of course, another station about away from treatment. Any station that requires treatment, ask allergy, okay? Yes. This is one thing. Another thing, um, don't go to the rest of uh, obstetric history, please. Okay, this is the urogynecology station. Focus on the urogynecology history, okay? Medical right. conditions important, of course, because some medical conditions will lead to that. Like, for example, if she is diabetic, right? So just exclude the medical problems, please. Right? You are doing really well. And I think that with a little bit of more practice and, you know, um, reflection on your task and in your performance, you will be perfect. Inshallah. Inshallah, my dears. Okay, thank you very much, my friends. And I was feeling so happy to have you today. I hope that you feel the same. And regarding the session time, I'm so sorry that, you know, I really, really tried to fill, you know, the timing of the next session between my schedule. So I'm so sorry. It's too difficult to change it. I'm sorry. So if you miss a live session, you can listen to the record, my friend. Once you have filled the form, okay, to attend the free course, you will be contacted, okay, uh, with one of the assistant 
one of the organizers of this course and you will have access to the record. So don't worry, you will have the access guys. So you can listen to it at any time. The most important thing for me is that you applied in your practice with your study partners. Good luck, my friends. And I'll see you in the next session. According to our schedule, next session will be on Wednesday. And we are going to practice cases from the maternal medicine, I think. Right? Is that correct? Let me see and confirm. Somebody have seen the advertisement? Guys, excuse my very poor memory. Yes, next session is antenatal care and maternal medicine. Okay, so that's good. We will speak more about the antenatal care and maternal medicine cases. And we will discuss interesting tasks, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you very much, my friends. And see you next. Bye. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you.